All right, thanks, buddy. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie Yates Anya Buile, Steph Anya for short. I'm a licensed associate marriage and family therapist. This channel is for fellow therapists, those thinking of becoming therapists or in the process of becoming therapists and those who are simply looking to create their best lives. And today's video is for that second group. I know I've been neglecting you guys just a little bit and today we'll be talking about how to pass the hardest exam I've ever taken in my life, the National Marriage and Family Therapy exam. So if you are curious about some study tips and the tools that I use to go from failing all of my practice exams to passing the first time I took the real exam, Stay tuned. What's on your mind? All right, so this is gonna be a bit of a story time too because I cannot talk about this exam and remove myself from the equation. It was such a huge part of my life for a while. To be totally honest, I'm not the type of student that will make sure I do every reading. I always try to make sure I do just enough so that I understand the material enough to do the assignment. I know I'm not the only one, so I'm not too embarrassed about that, but unfortunately, I learned really quickly that that does not work with this exam. I took a practice exam as a part of a required assignment for one of my classes, and when I say I bombed that exam, I literally cannot remember. I'm very good with remembering grades. I could tell you like the exact grade I got on in a random class in undergrad. I can't remember what my score was and I think I blocked it out of my memory because it was so bad. I remember it was in May because I was really down about it because I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm graduating really soon and I am nowhere near where I need to be to pass this exam and I was terrified. So what I had to decide in that moment is that I've got to go against my grain, my natural instinct to just do the bare minimum when it comes to preparing for exams. Even with the SAT, I did not study. For the SAT, I just took it and I was happy with the score. I was like, I'll take it again, just in case. Fast forward to being an adult, I can't just keep taking things over and over again because this exam is expensive. It costs me $355 to actually sit for the exam, $100 just to apply to my state so I could sit for the exam. So the stakes were high, this is not cheap. I needed to really make sure that I wasn't taking it if I wasn't ready, but I was stressed. I was very stressed about passing the exam and honestly, I had a lot of self doubt. I have to actually study and figure out how to study. A lifelong non-studier having to figure out how to make it work, I'd seen so many other videos and articles about how it's like really hard to pass. I knew people personally who had taken the exam three and four times and had not passed. So I was terrified. I'm like, I don't wanna go through this graduate program and never be able to actually become a licensed therapist. And I'm so happy to report that I passed the first time. So I'm sharing the knowledge and my experience with you guys. With all of that said, let's jump into the things that worked well for me. And I'll just kind of show you what what my study process looked like. So the national exam is 200 questions that you have up to four hours to take. As soon as I graduated, I thought, okay, now I have the time to really focus on this exam. And so I started to do things that would kind of make it part of my lifestyle studying instead of just thinking of it as something separate from my life. And so what I mean by that is that I knew, for example, I'm always on my phone, checking emails, checking texts, social media, whatever. So I was thinking, how can I use my phone as a resource for studying? So I started thinking, are there any apps that I could use? And there was an app that I actually found to be pretty useful. It's called MFT Quiz. The 99 cent version or $1.99 cent version is MFT Quiz Lite. And then they have the 
MFT Exam Pro. That one is pretty pricey, I'm not gonna lie. It's like $13, I've never paid that much for an app, but it has 200 questions at least. And so I could pick the number of questions I want to do at any given moment. If I had like five minutes to spare, maybe I'd choose five questions. If I had an hour to spare, maybe I'd choose you know, 30, 40 questions, um, and I would, get familiar with those questions just whenever I was on my phone and I sometimes have this desire to be on my phone even if I don't necessarily have something to do. So that was a great opportunity for me to be on my phone and be studying at the same time. So I definitely do recommend that app. It can be a bit pricey, but I did love the fact that I had access to questions no matter where I was. The other thing that I was heavily using, and you can tell from the wear and tear, these AATBS course materials, this was really vital. Honestly, this is the main thing I used. And AATBS stands for the Association for Advanced Training in the Behavioral Sciences. They have a lot of different programs that you can enroll in. Fortunately, my school, part of my tuition was being enrolled in these programs and you have access to practice exams, practice quizzes. They do have a digital book that I had access to through my tuition. They also have these note cards that I used and purchased. But again, they have a digital version of those as well. Very, very helpful. This is pretty much what I used to know how I was doing. So when I took that exam, the first time when I really failed it, you have a great opportunity to go back, look at every single question, they'll give you the rationale for the answer, and you can see which one you answered correctly, which ones you answered incorrectly, so that's a huge benefit. Because based on that, I started creating a spreadsheet or OneNote sheet where I would write down all of the topics that I have been really struggling with things that were coming up a lot in the exam questions that I didn't know. One thing to know about the marriage and family therapy exam is that even though our programs really emphasize systemic thinking, systemic scholars, unfortunately and unfortunately, the exam doesn't exclusively cover systemic theory. And so that was like one of the biggest eye-opening experiences. There were theories I had never even heard of and I needed to brush up on those theories. And it's really no slight to my school. My school is CoAmpti accredited. I talked about in another video the importance of CoAmpti accreditation. And so my school has been vouched as a program that can prepare you for licensing. But to pass these exams, you do have to do some independent study and learning on your own to make sure that you are at least familiar with not only systemic theorists and theories. So when I would identify areas I was struggling with, that's where I would say, okay, I need to find more information on these areas and so there I would turn to a great YouTube channel by Diane Gayhart she wrote <laughs> textbooks that I read during graduate school so she has such a wealth of knowledge and detail about these theories and models that we need to know for the exam so whenever I would be struggling with a certain area I would try to find a video that she might have on it and hers their full lectures PowerPoint slides like you're in class I took a lot of notes and this is how I really refreshed myself on some of the fundamentals that I learned in my graduate program and so during this time right after my graduation when I was using the app and I was gathering just the areas I was struggling in looking at YouTube those were my like I would say casual study months and as I was trying to figure out when am I going to be able to sit for this exam based on my application status and everything with my state. I was just casually studying and I needed like a date. I needed to know when I was taking this exam so that I could truly make a schedule. So once I had a day for my exam, which ended up being in November, the six weeks prior, I made a very specific study schedule. On there, Every single day, I listed out what topics I was going to be reading about. And I was using the AATBS materials to know which sections I'd be reading through each day, making notes for. So this is how I held myself accountable for making sure I read every page from cover to cover in both volumes of the AATBS exam prep course. And on my calendar, I would say I'm taking practice exam one, practice exam two. I would know what day I was taking it and then I would see how I was doing, which areas I was really struggling with. One of my biggest tips is to have your study
study notes be digital? The reason why, I know I'm one of those people that I feel like if I handwrite something, I can actually remember it better. But the reason why for a huge exam like this, it can be very useful to do it digitally is because I can search for things. So when I was really trying to figure out where did I put that, oh, that name sounds familiar. Like I'm trying to make connections, I could search within my notes because they were digital notes. As opposed to handwritten notes where it can be a bit harder to try to keep track of where things are. I would just make completely separate pages. I put the things that I was learning through AATBS and YouTube videos into a format that really worked for me. There are five practice exams that come with AATBS and I utilized all five of them. I made sure I took every single one. They're all 200 questions and you have the ability to go through all of them. That's what takes the most time. I would always give myself at least two to three days to make sure I was going through every single question that I took on that exam, looking at the rationale, whether I got it right or wrong, to make sure that when I got it right, it wasn't just happenstance or luck, that I understood the question and I was answering it based on what I had been learning. Another wonderful thing about AATBS and their study materials is that you can do quizzes based on section. So on the app I talked about earlier, I could pick the number of questions I wanted in a quiz, five, 10, 15, all 200, but AATBS takes it a step further because I can pick a specific section that I want to be studying. So if I'm looking at ethics, for example, I can say I want 10 questions in ethics and it will generate a quiz for me. And I can pick if I want to take those questions out of the pool for other quizzes or if, you know, maybe if I didn't do very well on them, maybe I choose to keep those questions in the pool as they randomly generate quizzes for me. So that was a wonderful benefit it's something I heavily utilized during that six week heavy intensive studying where I was studying at least two hours a day. And then some of my tips just for taking the exam itself. For me, knowing it was 200 questions, I needed to know where I would take my breaks. So I would make sure that even when I was taking my practice exams, I knew how many questions I would get through before I would take a break. And during my break, I would either take a sip of water, maybe lay my head down, close my eyes. Sometimes I would meditate pray, whatever I needed to do during that break, just so that I was making sure that I wasn't overwhelming myself and misreading questions really just due to fatigue. It wasn't a race to me. During my practice exams, I would always time myself and I was always averaging around two and a half hours, so you don't have to use the full four hours, but I will tell you, on the day of that exam, I think it was like three hours, maybe like 30 minutes. I took my time, I took breaks. I made sure that I was fully cognizant and paying attention to every question. So you have up until the full four hours, I definitely used a majority of that time. Pace yourself so that you can make sure you're fully giving each question the attention that it deserves. And so that is a lot of information about how I took that exam. I feel like I covered a lot, but you guys asked really great questions so if you have other questions about the exam please comment them down below if there are specific topics that you'd like me to cover in preparation for the exam I ended up doing really well on it and I only missed probably the majority I missed I think was maybe five or six questions in any given section um, and so I felt really confident by the time I took the exam and for me to go from bombing my first practice exam to passing the actual exam with flying colors it's possible for anybody so let me know if you have any other other questions about either taking the exam or the exam itself and I really want to be able to provide that support for you guys I hope this was helpful I ask that you subscribe to my channel and like this video if you found it helpful again my name is Stephanie Yates Anyabwile Steph Anya for short I truly appreciate you for watching until the end of the video that actually really really helps me thank you Whoa.